In this video, we will take you to learn about the ROS2 function of ROARM underscore M3 and ROARM underscore M2 robotic arms together. Whether you are a robot enthusiast or a programming beginner, this tutorial will help you easily get started with using ROS2 programs. Before that, we need to mount the image onto the virtual machine. First, we need to create a new virtual machine and the name here can be customized. Select Linux in the type field. Select Ubuntu in the version field. Then click on the virtual hard disk and choose not to add a virtual hard disk. Select the newly created virtual machine, right-click on it, and click Settings to enter the Virtual Machine Settings page, and click Save. In the controller, click Register, and select the image provided by us to mount to the virtual machine. Then you can double-click to open the virtual machine. Here, both the username and password are WS. At this point, the virtual machine has successfully mounted the image. Let's operate on the ROARM underscore M3 robotic arm. We need to connect the serial port of the robotic arm to our computer using a USB cable. Remember not to insert the wrong serial port here. Click on the device dash USB. If there is no new CP210X port added, you can download the CP210X driver installation package from the wiki FAQ to install it. If there is a new port, mount the serial port at the device USB location above the virtual machine. Let's run the ROS2 underscore humble.sh script to enter the Docker container. Next, enter lsdev tty to print out the serial device. If the previous mounting is successful, a device with dev TTY USB 0 will appear. Then, input the command to grant all users read and write permissions on the serial port device. Next, we need to recompile the work environment. After compilation, check if ROARM underscore model in the environment variable corresponds to the physical robotic arm. After the changes, use source bashrk to update the environment variables. Next, let's run the drive node of the robotic arm. Only by running this node can communication be established with the lower computer. Running this launch file will display the ERDF model of the robotic arm in the ARVAS window. If the previous operations are completed, the physical robotic arm will move along with the movement of the ERDF model. The left side is the operation interface of the robotic arm drive node. On the right is the interface for viewing the joints of the ARVAS 2 robotic arm model. You can control the rotation of each joint of the robotic arm by dragging and dropping the sliders on the control panel. Clicking center will restore the model to its initial position when the ARVAS 2 model interface started. You can also reopen a terminal and enter the container to input the following command. The value of publishing message data in the LED control topic can range from 0 to 255, so as to control the brightness of the LED light. The above operations are demonstrated using the ROARM M3 model. If your robot is ROARM M2, you need to go to the Bashrk folder to modify the environment variables. Changed ROAR model equals ROAR M3 to ROAR model equals ROAR M2. After modifying the variables, you need to compile the environment again and enter commands to reconfigure the environment variables. This will replace the models in the ERDF with ROAR M2. The operation and running of nodes are the same as those of ROAR M3. We will not demonstrate this further here. Open a new terminal, enter the container, and execute the launch file to view the model. If you encounter this problem when running the launch file to view the model, that's because the X server cannot be accessed. You need to open a new terminal and run the host plus command on the host before you can run it again. That's the introductory tutorial on the basic driving and control of robotic arms. If you find it interesting, remember to follow us. We will also bring more ROS2 tutorials about robotic arms later.